Over the next few nuggets, we're going to be taking a close look at some of the important show commands that you could get used to using on a regular basis in your Junus operating system environment. In this nugget, what we're really going to be covering is the show system command and all of the different variants or options that you can apply on the end of that show system command. We'll unpack what it really means to actually use the show system command and what is the kind of output that you could actually expect to it and what are my favorite commands that we can actually use. So let's get going talking about what the show show system command really does and what are some of the variants of show system that you can start using right now on your Junos platforms. Let's go. Now, for the most part in this content, I'm actually going to be working on the console of my EX2200 series switch. And the reason why is that a lot of these commands really only work on physical hardware. I mean, there is a lot of this stuff that we can do. You'll be able to follow along in a virtual environment, but some of these commands won't work perfectly the way you would expect them to, or they will certainly work differently than they would on physical equipment. So I'm going to pull up the console of my EX2200 switch, and this is how we're going to get started. We're going to first talk about show system commands. Now, when we talk about system, what you should be thinking of here is operating system. When we do show system commands, what we're really going to be looking at is software items that could be happening or things that we can monitor within the software or the OS, if I can write OS, there we go, or the OS, you know what, I'm going to clean this up, make that a little bit better. There we go, or the OS of our device. So when we say show system, that's not really going to cut it. We have to tell it what part of our software or what part of our operating system is it that we're really interested in monitoring. So let's take a look at some of my options here. Using context sensitive help by hitting the question mark, I can see, well, there's actually a lot of different things that we could actually view within the actual operating system items themselves. Let's start off at the very top. We're not going to cover all of these, but we are going to talk about some of the important ones. And I do really like show system alarms. This is going to be an important one because this is what will tell us what is going on with our operating system that might not be behaving exactly correct. Now, immediately, I want to point out right here that this is a CLI output. We typed the command show system alarms. But on some platforms like the EX4000 series devices, there is actually an LCD front panel on the front of that. And we could view our system and chassis alarms directly on that LCD panel. We can see if there's anything wrong with the device itself directly from the front panel of the device, which I think is really, really cool. Never forget that there are more than one way to interact with a Junos device. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the command line. They do put these LCD panels with little buttons on the front of them so that you could still access pieces or important or critical or emergency functions of the Junos device physically when you're standing directly in front of it. But also don't forget that comes with a physical security risk too. You want to make sure that access to those devices is limited. So now that I've gotten off of that soapbox, we are looking at show system alarms. And I see this is a major alarm right here. It tells me the date and time of this, but of course this date and time is wrong because I haven't configured the date and time on this device. But nonetheless, the last time this device booted up, it noticed that my management ethernet link is down. Always remember that on Juniper devices, there is a management ethernet interface. Sometimes that is labeled EM0, sometimes it's labeled ME0. But it's almost always on the back of the Juniper device. You can assign it its own IPv4 address, and then you would want to SSH or remote into the device through that management IPv4 address. And again, this also separates it from the data plane itself. Now all 24 of my Ethernet ports that are on the front of the device can be used strictly for forwarding traffic rather than for controlling my SSH traffic and SSHing into the device. So here, this system alarm is telling me that a critical Ethernet interface is currently down. So jumping a little bit ahead, I'm going to run the command show interfaces terse. And if I scroll on down just a hair... I see there is the management ethernet interface right there. And sure enough, it does have a link status of down because I have nothing plugged in to that interface currently. So this is a cool way that we can immediately get some info, some warning items that this device is telling me about the operating system and the configuration of my devices by throwing a major alarm at me. If I didn't know to check out show system alarms, I would not know that this alarm is actually being fired off right now. So that's awesome. And that covers our first item that I wanted to talk about with show system alarms. Now I'll hit question mark and we'll take a look at some of the other ones that I like to take a look at as well. The next one I want to cover is right here. 
show system commit. We can look at any pending commits because we use the commit at command, or we can also look at the commit history and take a look at all of the previous commits that have taken place. Another way to put this is we can kind of look at what are the rollback options that we have on this device. So if I jump down to the bottom, I'll give this a show system commit, and we're looking at the most recent, oh, hit the button too soon, there we go. We're looking at the most recent 50 commits, and in my case, I've only had 27 commits, and I also have my rescue commit labeled down here. Now, you may be looking at this last column here going, wait, what's going on here? Did you know that when you issue the commit command, you can apply a message on the end of it, and that way you can put a note of what this commit does? So now when I run the show system commit command, I could actually put a note on each one of these commits denoting what was the change that this commit made. And that way I could see, oh, well, that's cool. I want to roll back to this version right here. And then I look right on over and see, oh, well, that's rollback six would we'll get the job done. So I highly recommend taking that little bit of knowledge right there and applying it immediately. Whenever you do a commit, you should probably also put a little message in there letting the other users know what your commit is actually doing. That way, when they do show system commit, they'll be able to see, oh, well, now I can see what each one of these commits actually did at the end of the day. So show system commit is another awesome one that I really like to highlight and bring to your attention. Let's do show system and question mark one more time. And the one that I want to look at now is show system connections. This is cool because what this one does is it actually shows us our open connections that we have to other devices, whether it's using TCP or UDP or whatever, but it also lets us know what are the listening ports that this device is currently listening on to. So if I say show system connections, check this out. Do you see what's going on here? We see TCP4 indicating this is TCP for IPv4, and it shows us that we have established sessions going on between this local address and this remote address. Now, sure enough, these are pretty much on the exact same device that we're talking here. But if we had any other actual remote sessions from our local session to any different sessions, this is where we'd be able to inspect that. Notice if we scroll down some more, we've got UDP. We've got UDP 4.6 for IPv4 and IPv6 and so on and so on and so on. And then we also have IP and there would also be ICMP as another available source if that was going on as well. All right, now to another major one that I really love here, and that is show system storage. Check this out. This is where we can actually get insights into the actual file system itself and the available storage that we have. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about the show system storage command and how we can actually interact with storage in a nugget towards the end of this particular skill. But this is a great way just to quickly get insights into what the utilization of our storage system is. What are the different devices that we could actually save stuff to? And then we can even explore different items like what, are our, what does our temporary storage or our temp folders look like? I think this is a really, really useful way to get insights into the storage with out being on the actual free BSD operating system itself and needing to know all of those free BSD commands. Now, the last one that I want to highlight here is show system statistics. Let me do that right there. And this is where we can actually get really, really verbose output about the different statistics or monitoring that's going on for each of the different protocols. For instance, if I scroll all the way back up, we start out by looking at TCP statistics. We see the number of packets sent, the number of packets received. We can also get insights into the errors that are taking place too. We see the different connection attempts, which would be right in here, and the connection request would be right here. And honestly, the output here is so incredibly ro robust and verbose. There's probably a statistic somewhere if you're if you're interested in the data that's being transmitted through your device. This is a great way to quickly see how is the device processing data and what kinds of packets is it more likely to transmit? I mean, think about it. Using this kind of output, we can see, well, are we more likely to transmit UDP-based traffic or TCP-based traffic or plain old IP traffic or even ICMP traffic? Because all of these items are listed here. And notice, like, look at how much output we've already had so far, and we're still only at the 25% mark. That's right. There is a tremendous number of statistics that our Junos devices actually keep under the hood about what the operating system is really doing. And this is just the high level overview of the different statistics that our Junos device is keeping. See, I can keep on scrolling down. We see some interface statistics, ARP statistics, our IPv6 statistics, and ICMP for v V6 statistics. 
the ESIS protocol. It's so crazy to me that they have this kind of stuff here. Remote desktop protocol, MPLS traffic, VPLS traffic, bridging, and we finally reached the bottom of it. So there you go. It just took a while to hit spacebar. I had to hit spacebar a few dozen times to actually get to the bottom of the output of this EX2200 switch. So that has been the show system command. It's really all about monitoring what the operating system and the software processes are doing for us at the end of the day. Now in the next nugget, we're going to explore the show chassis command, which is really focused on the hardware. So get ready because that one's going to be a lot of fun too. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.